Now Sri Tapan Kumar Sen. Okay, now I want to take the sense of the house. Uh, today being the, yes, today being the last working day of this week, I think uh, you all agree we will uh, adjourn at 5 p.m., 5 p.m.? 5. Ah, so you have only 10 minutes, uh, uh, 10 or 11 minutes, you can. If you don't want to speak, I will call Raja. Who will, either you or Raja. Kevin, you want to speak? Okay? Yes. Okay, then you speak. But 5 p.m. we will act on. That is the reason. Deputy Chairman, sir, I raise to give the observation on this budget. For my party, the other aspect of budget, my other colleague will be speaking. I will only throw light on the basic matter. That is only after one month. Macro aspect of the, yes. Okay. Then we will speak. I will just focus on the basic macro aspect. I think Mr. Chidamaram has done a great job by giving all the figures here. However, blight the budget might have been shown. The fact of the thing is, the case is that the budget is a contractionary budget. And I remember the first statement made by our present finance minister, Arun Jaitley, in this house itself, while talking about the financial position of the country, that if our expenditure pattern is contractionary, it retards the growth. I think the same thing Mr. Chidamanam has told today. So, by making our total budget size, as has been told, that as a percentage of GDP, it has declined from 13.4 to 12.7 percent. And please take note of, if 2014 onwards all the three budget is seen, it is a consistent decline. That is what is called Jumla. It is a consistent decline in figurative term. That is consistently construct, expenditure is getting contracted in terms of GDP. And this is reflected in other aspect of social welfare is uh, aspect. It is in terms of figure it is shown that a great increase has been made for SCs, STs and women and tribal population and Muslim minorities. But if you go in terms of GDP, it is hardly 5% for the women who constitute 50% of the population. It is 1.48% for the SCs. Some 2% for the STs, if my figure, if I remember the correct figure. It is not more than that. What is the percentage of this population in our country? So this is one aspect, this basic. The problem, the problem remains in the basics. So whatever flowery language, ornamental language you may utilize in the budget, that does not serve the purpose that has been done to befool the people. And in that sense, I call this an absolutely deceptive budget. Second, my second point is, uh, Honorable Ch Deputy Chairman, sir, my second point is that it is about an important focus of this government in managing its economy. That is disastrous for like our country's national economy and self-reliance. They are going ahead with privatization or all profit-making public sectors. Already Niti Aayog made a list of 74 CPSUs. In my state, the three major industries, which is both heritage in nature, the alloy steel plant of Durgapur, bridge and roof of Howrah, it's a running profit-making company, and also Bengal Chemical, which was set up by great Profullo Chandra, is being targeted to be privatized and closed down. It is targeted and closed down. Yesterday, I made, two days back, I made a submission in the zero hour. I repeat that, that by targeting to wholesale privatization of our public sector network, which was the bulwark of our economic capacity, make in India slogan cannot match, does not match with you. So make in India slogan is being given to be fool the people, practically, the whole exercise of putting all our national asset to auction 
is aimed at serving, I repeat, the big foreign corporates and their chamchas, Indian chamchas. That is the main target of the entire privatization and economic exercise. For that, a dedicated agency was appointed in the name of Niti Ayok by dismantling the, our great tradition of planning commission, which put in place in a developing country in India the concept of planning in economic development with an approach of an equitable growth pattern. That planning commission has been buried, Niti Ayog is repressed, and they are appointed as a chief marketeer of our public sector assets, even which are making profit, adding to regular uh, contribution to public action. My third point is on finance management, an important comment by Honorable Finance Minister. In his budget speech, he told, and I agree to you, that so far as tax payment is concerned, we are a non-compliant economy. In his budget statement, it is there. And he has given figure in support of his statement. I fully agree to that. I fully agree to that statement of his. But what is he actually doing? He made a statement. Got a applaud. Then what is he doing about managing that finance? They are it, so much concerned about the resource crunch. So much concerned about the resource crunch. Even then, and talking so lavishly about black money. What is black money? The earning on which the tax is not being paid. As per their own budget statement, received budget, this year, 6.59 lakh crore is unpaid direct tax, corporate and income tax. It is accumulated over a year. Every year it is increasing consistently. And last three years, it has jumped from 4 lakh crore to 6.59 lakh crore. Last three years, all direct tax and corporate tax, unpaid taxes. Government itself is admitting out of these 81,406 crore is not, there is no dispute on that, but still it is being preferred to remain uncollected. This is a deliberate promotion to the pilferage from the National Exchequer. And it is the government pilferer nexus which is governing the country's economic management. I am sorry to say, but this is what is the real reality. And on the other hand, even in the life, present budget, 20,000 crore more concession was given to the direct tax account. And in the indirect tax account, which, I repeat, Mr. Chidamar, that the present situation warrants decline a sharp cut in the direct, indirect tax load so that people can purchase, create an effective demand in the market and create an uh, atmosphere for investment generation. In that event, 20% concession has been given in direct tax and 75,000 indirect tax additional burden they have planned to collect through this budget. Last year it was 19,000 additional burden. Year before last it was 23,000 additional budget. And in every three years, First year, the concession was 8,000 crore given on the direct and corporate tax. The same tax thieves, they have been awarded with more concession. And the people, indirect tax, nobody can avoid. You are imposing burden on that. This is the so-called proprio approach of this government. And last point is demonetization. Enough of drama has been done. Even if we go by the 100 percent, Mr. Sukhendu Shekhar Rai just read out, I don't go by TV speech, I go by the statement made by the official government notification, which just now Sukhendu Shekhar Rai read out. The four objectives. The minimum sense of honesty, integrity and transparency demands that this house must be told how much black money you have recovered. This house must be told. How much counterfeit currency could be seized? This house must know the answer. 
to what extent the terrorist activity and terrorist funding could be contained. Almost 100% money that has been demonetized has already come in the banking system. As per the statement made by RBI, as on 2nd January, 98% at that time. By time, almost 100%. What does that mean? Black money has been whitened and you have, this government has facilitated whitening of that black money. It is not an automatic, it is not a mistake. It is an instrument. It is an instrument by which black money has been facilitated to be whitened. Corrupt people have been indulged and they are talking of fighting against corruption. I think this is the biggest ever corrupt practice that has been indulged through this process of demonetization. Okay. And now, now you can. And last time. No, time me. is oh. Okay. I will continue. You can continue. Yes. You, I see. Do, okay. I will continue. Yes, during the next part of the session. Okay. Okay. You, yes. You, yes. Can, you can continue. Next yeah, session, I will continue. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, next session. Next, not next session, next part of the session. A uh, part of the session. Uh, next part of the session. Continuing in this part of the session and next part of the session. Yeah, yeah. And if I can, Babu, get yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is a special privilege. Yeah. That is a special privilege. <laughs> now I have some um, um, special mention. I can allow them to lay on the table if they would like. Sri Ahmad Hassan. Not percent. Then Sri Trichy Shiva. Uh, sir, I lay on the table uh, my okay. special mention okay. to take steps to declare Kalana in Tamil Nadu as a world heritage. Okay, okay. Sri Ms. Devlasan. No. Sri Derek O'Brien. Sir, I lay my special mention lack of securities in Aadhaar services. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Sri Mohammed Nadimul Haq. Sir, I lay my special mention on the increasing trolling practices online. Professor Amir Rajiv Gowda. Sir, I lay on the table my issue, which is the alarming recurrence of polio in Gujarat in India. Sir. Okay. Sri Hussain Dalwai. No. Sri Chaudhary Manwar Salim. 1%. Dr. V. Maitriyan. No. <laughs> yeah. Sri T. Ratnivel. Ratnivel. I lay on the table, sir. Okay. The house stands adjourned till 11 a.m. on Thursday, the 9th March 2017.